Well, hello, Green Bay. Good to see you all. Can I just say there's so many reasons to be thankful. I, for one, would just like to say two of my dearest friends happen to be two of the most effective and decent people I have ever met in Tony Evers and Gretchen Whitmer. So thank you. Incredible. And as Tony said it, let, let's just be clear. I think you know in this state what you have, but on behalf of the rest of the country, the rest of the country needs Senator Tammy Baldwin. Please send her back. Please send her back. I said between Minnesota and Wisconsin, we have three of the best senators in the entire country. The other one, not so much, but you work on that next time. I'd like to give a big thank you today, especially to, uh, to the leadership of our indigenous sovereign nations who are here today, so thank you for that. And each and every one of you, look, it's a Monday in October, and you came here, got in line, came in here to show how much you love this country and the work you're going to do for it. So thank you, each and every one of you. And because of that, I'm going to clear this up right at the beginning. I came just a few minutes ago from Lambeau Field. First visit, my staff was like, don't say anything about the Vikings. I said, that's like telling somebody not to swear in church. Of course you don't do that. What do they think? I'm a football guy. That's like, that's like a religious experience over there. But, uh, but look, we may not see eye to eye on that part of it, but I can tell you what, we're all going to agree on this. This year, the road to the Super Bowl, the road to control of the Senate, and the road to the White House goes right through the NFC North. Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Look, you had, you had a Lions fan, a Packers fan, and a Vikings fan up here. The only thing more amazing is we got Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, and, and Taylor Swift all on the same ticket. So there you go. All right, 22 days until Election Day, and we are running like this is it. 22 days. 22 days till we win this thing. Everything is on the line. Everything is on the line. So Kamala and I, we are not going back. We are not going back. So look, we're barnstorming the country. We're doing radio, TV, podcasts. I'm about two hits away from being a regular on Fox News now. We're like on a, we're on a first name basis. But look, our policies help the people who listen to Fox News. That's why we need to get out there. Over the weekend, Kamala Harris made it very clear on this. She's ready. She has been making this clear for a long time. She's ready to be commander in chief and she released her medical records. Straight, clean bill of health. Physical, mental stamina to do the job. Now, I think you all know where I'm going with this, don't you? We're all wondering. Don Donald Trump said that he would release his numbers. He would release his, uh, his medical records. Look, he says now, I, I think he forgot to do it. He's been forgetting things. We'll give him a break on this. But, but Kamala Harris is right on this. Watch his rallies. He's confused. He's a nearly 80-year-old man. He's ranting and rambling until people get bored and leave his rallies. That's happening. But here's the thing about this. It would be funny if it wasn't so dangerous. Yesterday, he went on Fox News. That's a safe place for him. He went on there, and he suggested that he is going to send the military against the enemy from within. Now, I want you to think about it. In other words, Americans who don't support him. Just to be clear, if any of your neighbors or friends or anybody thinks about that, you know who he's talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about you. He's talking about someone who comes to a rally to express their love and their commitment to our democracy. Donald Trump sees that as an enemy. All right. So I have to tell you, as someone who wore this nation's uniform proudly, as someone who now is the commander and chief of the Minnesota National Guard, the idea of sending U.S. military personnel against American citizens makes me sick to my stomach. I'll tell you what. We'll let the lawyers decide if what he said was treason, but what I know is it's a call for violence, plain and simple. 
and it's pretty damn un-American, if you ask me. So look, if anybody wants to pretend that this is a normal conversation that Donald Trump is having, just dispel that. The former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of He's proud to have been part of the most pro-labor administration in American history. Unafraid and standing next to Joe Biden as we walk picket lines for workers demanding better pay and better working conditions. Because we know when workers win, America wins. It's that simple. And guess what? The middle class grows and businesses flourish. Now look, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they see things differently. Trump talks a big game, but he was a disaster for working people. He was one of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs in American history, and that's a fact. So to your neighbors, your friends, hell, our family members, if they say, I don't really like Trump, but I like his policies, which policies were those when he destroyed American manufacturing, when he shipped jobs to China? Hell, he doesn't even manufacture his Bibles here. He outsources that to China. So just so we know. Under his leadership, 83,000 jobs disappeared in Wisconsin. Now, I know this state knows. Thank God for Tony Evers and some sanity in this, because I remember. Because remember Trump and that guy before Tony, when they went to the Foxconn, they, they went to the Foxconn site, Donald Trump showed up with a golden shovel. You tell me. Uh, Governor Whitmer, if he knows which end of the shovel actually works, I guarantee you that. But he did that photo op and he promised you 13,000 jobs. And he called that big glass sphere the eighth wonder of the world. Well, I know it's not a shock to any of you, but none of those jobs materialized. And that sphere, you can get a pretty good deal right now renting it out as a banquet hall, just so you know that. Once again, it would be funny if it wasn't so damn sad, because that's Donald Trump's legacy. He claims he cares about union workers, but he makes it harder for them to bargain for pay and benefits. So if there's any questions amongst our union sisters and brothers on this, Donald Trump is a scab. He will break, he will break picket lines. And the other day, Senator Vance attacked the PRO Act, a bill that protects workers' right to organize and collectively bargain. The AFL-CIO said that the PRO Act is the most significant worker empowerment legislation since the Great Depression. J.D. Vance called it a failed model. So just to be clear, the guy who showed up and wanted to act nice a few weeks ago is not the guy's policies that care for workers. They undermine them every step of the way, and that populist stick is nothing more than an act because they've never worked union jobs. They've never been union members. They've never cared about workers. And so Trump promised he would stop offshoring. His tax bill created incentives for companies to do this, that. He cut taxes for billionaires and corporations during his presidency, and 200,000 American jobs went overseas. So their revisionist history is a bunch of crap. It did not happen. They undermined us. Look, you all know it. We can't have four more years of this. We won't have four more years of it. We won't. Now, I want to make sure I speak precisely on this. I said, Donald Trump doesn't have a damn plan. That wasn't quite true. He had a concept of a plan on health care. But he actually does have a plan. And they did us a favor. They printed it. It's about 900 pages of the Project 2025, just so you know. Now, he made it clear he'll do it. He'll go what's in there. And just so all of you know, I'll save you the time of reading it, but you ought to see it. It's terrifying on this. He will gut the Affordable Care Act. That's when he said he had a concept of a plan on the ACA. And then J.D. Vance tried to explain what that was. And I said, you should go back to the concept of a plan because you explain it. It's worse because it's not, it's not going to work. Cut Social Security. Just to be clear, every single year Donald Trump was president, and they'll fact check it to the end of time, he proposed cutting Social Security in his budgets. And now he wants to impose a Trump sales tax on everything we buy. There is not an economist in the world who thinks Donald Trump's tariffs won't end up costing you about $4,000 per family. It's that simple. So again, for your relatives and friends who think these policies are going to be good, 
Let's fix it on the front end so we don't have to say, I told you so, when they realize if this happens, if they elect this guy. But I don't want you to think I'm not generous to this, because somebody said, well, you never say anything about Donald Trump, I'll, anything nice. Well, that's probably true. I have not. <laughs> but he has kept some of his promises. He took his rich friends down to Mar-a-Lago. He told them on camera, you're rich as hell, and I'm going to give you a tax cut. He delivered that tax cut. So look, I know that these guys put that thing out there. Now they pretend like, oh, I don't know what Project 2025 is. What is that? You know, now all of a sudden, oh, we, we'll protect women's reproductive rights. You know, we didn't say that. Of course they said it. They said it every step of the way. And I said, football folks here know, you draw up a playbook, you're going to run the plays. That's what Project 2025 is. They're going to run the plays. Just so you know in there, a little side note, they're actually talking about privatizing the National Weather Service, the weather forecasting. Probably a pretty bad idea. Probably a pretty bad idea. Look, I say this, and I know this, I am preaching to the choir, but our recital is in 22 days, people, and we need to start singing. We need to start singing. So, so we know what their song sounds like, and it's terrible. Well, here's what our song sounds like. Give you something to vote for. Kamala Harris has laid out a plan to build an opportunity economy, one that lowers everyday costs, lifts everyone up, leaves no one behind. We're talking about a child tax credit to help new parents, $6,000 in the first year of that child's life, let you buy a crib, a child car seat. We did it in Minnesota. And you know what happens when you, in, when you put that child tax credit in? It reduces childhood poverty by a third. So you start investing in little ones. You know this story. You, you can invest in early childhood education. You could invest in a child tax credit. You could invest in children's health care. You can invest in your schools because you can make a decision. You can buy school buses and school meals or you can buy prison buses and prison meals. We'd rather buy the school buses. We'd rather invest on the front end. She talks about a home. These guys, these guys are speculators, Wall Street guys. These are the ones that see buying up homes and then jacking up the prices. That's what they do. It's just another commodity to buy and sell. Homes are where we take care of our family. That's why Kamala Harris has proposed building 3 million more homes and a $25,000 down payment assistance. That makes things better. And, and this price gouging stuff, you saw it in action. We got a hurricane coming in Florida. Guess what happened to airline prices right before that? People trying to fly out of Florida. That's not a fair economy. That's not capitalism. That's price gouging. And we saw it with insulin. Those of you who have to have your insulin, capping it at $35 makes sure everybody can get it. And you know why that's not against capitalism? Because it costs five bucks to make that vial of insulin. Why were they selling it for 800? And the answer is because they couldn't. No one stopped them from doing it. And it was putting people's lives at risk. We can do the same thing with prices across the board. And for those of you who are small business owners, you know what you pour into that business. You know how hard it is to start it. Right now, forever, we've had a $5,000 tax credit for you to start that small business. That's not enough. Kamala Harris has posed a $50,000 tax credit that lets you get your small business off the ground. That's the way it should be. And then some of you, for the gray hairs in here, or those of you who aren't gray hair, if you're caught in that sandwich generation, if you're like me, I got a a nearly 90-year-old mom, and I, as of yesterday, I have a, a nearly 90-year-old mom, and I, as of yesterday, I have an 18-year-old son on this. So uh, there we go. Gus, Gus turned 18 yesterday, and he said, Dad, you're working hard to get my vote. So there it is. But, but if you're in that generation, you're concerned about costs. You're concerned about apprenticeship programs or college, you're also concerned about Medicare and care for those parents. Kamala Harris proposed what I think is the most groundbreaking change to Medicare in maybe the last 50 years, the ability to pay for home health care for our seniors when they're at home. It's incredible. And get this, Medicare, some of you know this, Medicare didn't pay for vision and hearing. Those are important things when you need. So she proposed adding that to Medicare so that our seniors can get their hearing aids and their glasses. So here's the one. Clip this for your Republican uncle or your brother, if you're in some of us, and let them know 
when did the party of Ronald Reagan decide that it was okay for government to make your personal choices? Look, the Republican Party has added much to the benefit of this country, but that's not who Donald Trump and the mega folks are. When Vice President Harris I talk about freedom, she comes out to the stage on the song Freedom, it's not just a song. We mean that you should be free to make the decisions about your health care and your family, not politicians. And, and these guys on Social Security, we pay into it. In my family, it was Social Security survivor benefits. I'm a teenager. My little brother's in fourth grade. My dad dies. Social Security survivor benefits was there to keep my mom going. So we're, we're Midwesterners. We're damn happy to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We just didn't have any boots. That's what Social, that's what social Security survivor benefits is, and we paid into it. So these are the guys like Donald Trump tells you it's a Ponzi scheme. J.D. Vance tells you it's the only thing standing in in between fiscal sanity and that. No, it's not, it's tax, how can a guy like Donald Trump not pay taxes for 10 the last 15 years and then complain about Social Security? So Kamala Harris has said, we will strengthen Social Security and Medicare and make for a dignified retirement. And I'm gonna say it on this one. Freedom means a lot of things. We're talking about freedom for you to make your own choices, freedom to retire in dignity, freedom to have health care. And I'll say this, Freedom to send your children to school without worrying they'll be shot dead in that classroom. That's freedom. That's freedom. And I'm going to take no crap off these guys. I know guns. I'm a veteran. I'm a hunter. Kamala Harris is a gun owner, as we found out. We're not going to let them make this about the Second Amendment because we defend the Second Amendment. But our first responsibility is the safety and security of our children. That's our first responsibility. All right, you've seen it. Don't listen to the polling or whatever, but it's pretty clear on this, that the message is sinking in with the women, fellas. So I'm gonna make a message to the guys here for just a minute. I'm gonna make a, guy, I'm gonna make a message to the guys here. If you got any women you love in your life, your wives, your daughters, your mothers, and friends, let's not forget, their lives are literally at stake in this election. Let's be very clear. Donald Trump appointed those three Supreme Court justices who did exactly what he told them to do, repeal Roe versus Wade. He brags about it. He's glad my daughter Hope now has fewer rights than her mother had. That's what he's bragging about. More than 20 states, 20 states have the Trump abortion ban, which he calls a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. Now you're all thinking this. What that beautiful thing means is all across this country in those states, there are women that are being denied care in the ER, having miscarriages in parking lots, survivors of rape and incest being asked to carry those pregnancies to term. That could be the women across the country, and you saw it uh, with Amber Thurman down in uh, Georgia, had to travel to North Carolina because of that trip, she lost her life. If she would be living in a state or living in a country that had Roe versus Wade protection, she very well would be alive today. The idea that, the idea that women's rights are dependent on geography is just, abhorrent to all of us. That's why we need to elect Kamala Harris and reinstall Roe versus Wade. And here's, an, here's another one for the guys. Here's another one for the guys, because we care deeply about the families. They're not done. Project 2025 is going to restrict access to fertility treatments. They're going to be ripping those away. I know there's those of you out there. If you've not been through the, the actual anguish of infertility, I guarantee you know somebody who has. My wife and I went through this for years. We had access to insurance, and we had access to fertility treatments. So I have to tell you this. I'll be damned if I would deny anybody else a chance to have the family that they want. And you go back. You all go back to this. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the party of Ronald Reagan, the idea that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance should be able to tell you whether you have children or not? That is absolutely abhorrent. And I think when you talk to this, this issue about personal freedoms, while it puts women's lives at risk, every man in here, you have a vested interest to make sure that Donald Trump gets nowhere near the White House again on that issue alone. Now look, they are just getting started. If he wins, there's a good chance that the next president of the United States will appoint two or three more Supreme Court justices. An institution that already said he's got near total immunity and adjudicating the laws for our children and our grandchildren's lives. 
he could have six of nine justices on the Supreme Court appointed by one man who's above the law. That's not this country. That's not the way we want to go. But just to be clear, all of you know, we don't want it for our kids. We don't want it for our grandkids. But here's the, here, here's the big finish on this. That isn't going to happen because we're going to elect Kamala Harris to be president. Of the <laughs> 20, 22 days, don't get complacent. I know that people are talking about, so look, we are the underdogs. For Christ's sakes, I'm a Vikings fan. We're always the underdogs. You know that. Well, we're, well, we're also 5-0 and oh this year, so there's that. So look, I got to give the quote here on this. It was Vince Lombardi who gave that one, and I used it all the time on this. It's a very simple analogy that everybody in Wisconsin, everybody in Michigan, everybody in Pennsylvania knows. There is simply no substitute for work. No substitute for work. So look, 22 days, we're leaving it all on the field. It's all gas and no break for 22 days. I've been saying, I got to be careful on this one. I've been saying, we're going to sleep when we're dead, people. I had a woman come up to me at a rally and say, you're taking that too literally, man. You look like hell. So being done there. So. <laughs> I'm not slowing down. You're not slowing down. There are people out there that don't have the ability to come to a rally. They're too busy. They're working two and three jobs. They're concerned about health care. They're concerned about their children. We owe it to them to do everything we can to win this thing. Hell, there may be people not voting for us, but I'll damn sure guarantee you the proposals we're putting forward and Kamala Harris as a president will serve them so much better than Donald Trump that we owe it to those folks too. So look, early voting starts in eight days here on the 22nd. We need all of you to get out there, vote as early as you can, get out and bring people to the polls. I'm telling you, this thing is going to be close because we're a divided country. It's going to be close because they will do everything they can to try and suppress votes and make people feel like it doesn't matter. That's where you all come in. You're motivated enough to be here. You've got a voice to talk to your neighbors. You know you run into those people who say, oh, I'm just not that into politics. Too damn bad, politics is into you. Go vote, go vote, and let them know. If you tell them, they'll go. One or two people in every precinct in Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania will be the difference, not just for the next four years, but for the next 40 years. And not just for this state, or this country, but globally. The rest of the world is looking and saying, where is the America we love? Where is the America that leads with its values and its decency and its kindness? Well, I'll tell you where it's at. It's right in this room. And as, and you know it's this simple. The Vice President has said it, and it seems simple, but you know it's true. Vince Lombardi's no, there's no substitute for hard work. And when you put that work in and we fight, we win. So Wisconsin, let's win this thing right through Green Bay. Let's elect Kamala Harris president. Thank you. We need each of you to get 10 other people to vote for us. Every single Erie vote is critical for the future of our country. Now, I am so honored to introduce the person we are all here to welcome.
incredible Vice President Kamala Harris! taking time out of your busy lives to be here this evening and for all of us to be together. Can we hear it for Senator Fetterman? Your next state attorney general, Eugene DePasquale. Mayor Schember. Bob Casey, who could not be here tonight because he's out doing what he needs to do to get re-elected to the United States Senate. All right. Okay. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, Pennsylvania. We got just 22 days until Election Day. 22 days. And we are nearing the home stretch. But here's the thing. This is going to be a tight race until the very end, OK? We are the underdog. We are running like the underdog. We have some hard work ahead of us. But here's the thing also. We like hard work. <laughs> hard work is good work. And with your help in 22 days, we will win. 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 And here's why. And here's why. Because this election is about two very different visions for our nation. One, his focused on the past, and ours focused on the future. We are focused on issues that matter most to families across America, like bringing down the cost of living, investing in small businesses and entrepreneurs, protecting reproductive freedom. and keeping our nation secure. But that is not what we hear from Donald Trump. Instead, it is just the same old tired playbook. 
He has no plan for how he would address the needs of the American people and American families. He is only focused on himself. Well, folks, it's time to turn the page. It's time to turn the page. Turn the page. Because America is ready to chart a new way forward. And America is ready for a new and optimistic generation of leadership. Which is why Democrats, Republicans, independents are supporting our campaign. Because we need a president who works for all the American people. We are all in this together. And as you all know, this has been the story of my entire career. My entire career, I've only had one client, the people. As a young courtroom prosecutor, I stood up for women and children against predators. As Attorney General of California, I took on the big banks, fought to deliver $20 billion from middle-class families who faced foreclosure. I stood up for veterans and students who were being scammed by for-profit colleges. For workers who are being cheated out of the wages they were due. For seniors facing elder abuse. And it is my pledge to you as president, I will always fight for all the American people. Always. And together, together, we all will build a brighter future for our nation. Together. We will build a future where we have what I call an opportunity economy, where everyone can compete and have a real chance to succeed, not just to get by, but to get ahead. Under my economic plan, and by the way, you know, so dude wants to talk about his plans, which really are about cutting taxes for the richest people. Please do check out the Wall Street Journal or Goldman Sachs or the 16 Nobel laureates or Moody's who have all analyzed the plans and said mine will strengthen the economy, his will make it weaker. Okay? So under my economic plan, we will bring down the cost of housing and help first-time home buyers, giving them $25,000 for down payment assistance so you can just so you can just get your foot in the door. You'll do the rest, you'll save up, you'll work hard, but just to help people get their foot in the door. We will help entrepreneurs start and grow small businesses. How many small business owners do we have here? I love our small businesses. I love, you guys know it's part of my story. You know, my mother worked hard. We grew up, we lived in an apartment above a, a daycare center and it was owned by our, if, yes, daycare centers, bless you. <laughs> And it was owned by Miss Shelton, who we think of and thought of as, as our second mother. And she was a small business owner. And Miss Shelton, she was like all of you who do this work. You are business leaders, but you are community leaders. You are civic leaders. You mentor. You hire locally. I love our small businesses. Small businesses are part of the backbone of America's economy. So you all know what I'm talking about. And as we move forward, what we are going to do in terms of knowing that small businesses must get the support you need to start up and to grow. We will expand under my economic policy, Medicare, to cover home health care for seniors. So 
more seniors can live at home with dignity. And like so many of my priorities, it is born out of a personal experience. Look, when my mother got diagnosed with cancer, I took care of her. And for any of you who have taken care of someone, a senior in particular, you know what that's like. And it's about trying to cook something for them that they might enjoy eating. It's about trying to make sure that they have something that they can wear that won't irritate their skin, right? It's about trying to, from time to time, find a way to just bring a smile to their face or make them laugh. It's about dignity. It's about dignity. It's about dignity. But far too many people who want and need to take care of family members, either you have to leave your job or spend down everything you have to be able to qualify for Medicaid. That's not right. I look at the sandwich generation. So we, we refer to folks who are raising young children and taking care of your parents, the sandwich generation, you're right in between. Balancing all of that, it's a lot of pressure. And you need and deserve to have the support to be able to handle all of that in a way that we know you are adding so much to our community societies and our economies. So I have a plan and my plan is to make sure Medicare, not so you have to pay down everything and get on Medicaid, so that Medicare helps pay for home health care. So you can do the work you need to get done in terms of the seniors in your life. Under our plan, we will lower the cost on everything from health care to groceries. Look, I'm going to take on corporate price gouging just like I've done before. I'm going to do it again. And give a middle class tax cut to 100 million Americans, including $6,000 during the first year of your child's life. Knowing again, the vast majority of parents want to parent their children well, but don't always have the resources to do it. And so by expanding the child tax credit, that helps a young family buy a car seat, buy a crib, do the things in that so fundamental stage of their child's development, just to get them on the road to what they desire and want to do. And we all benefit from it. We all benefit from it. So all of this is to say, I will always put the middle class and working families first. I come from the middle class, and I will never forget where I come from. Never forget where I come from. Never. a little bit about my plan. Now let's talk about Donald Trump. Well, <laughs> he, he, has, he has a very different plan. Take, for example, Project 2025. Just Google it. It is a detailed and dangerous plan for what he will do if he is elected president. You know, y'all probably heard me say, Donald Trump, I think in our collective opinion, certainly mine, is, is, is an unserious man. But the consequences of him ever being president again are brutally serious. Brutally serious. So on Project 2025 and his plan, Donald Trump will give billionaires and corporations massive tax cuts like he's done before. Cut cut Social Security and Medicare. The plan on that end is to get rid of the $35 cap on insulin for seniors. To make it easier for companies to deny overtime pay for workers. You, you got to read the plan. I mean, the fact they put it in writing is a whole other thing to be discussed. 
And he plans to impose what I call a Trump sales tax, a 20% tax on everyday necessities, which economists have measured will cost the average American family more than $4,000 a year. And on top of all of this, Donald Trump intends to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. And he has no plan to replace it. <laughs> you guys watch the debate. <laughs> right, he has, quote, concepts of a plan. Concepts. But seriously, think about it in all seriousness. He's going to then threaten health insurance coverage for 45 million people based on a concept? <laughs> the seriousness of this cannot be overlooked. Think about that, taking us back to a time we all remember when insurance companies could deny people with pre-existing conditions. You remember what that was? Well, we are not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. No. And why are we not going back? Because we will move forward. Because ours is a fight for the future. And it is a fight for freedom. Like the fundamental freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government telling her what to do. And we all remember how we got here. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, and they did. And now, now in America, one in three women lives in a state with a Trump abortion ban. Think about that. Many of these bans have no exceptions even for rape and incest, which is saying to a survivor of a crime of a violation to their body, that you have no right to make a decision about what happens to your body next? That's immoral. That's immoral. And let us agree, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do. Not the government. No. No. If she chooses, she will talk with her priest, her rabbi, her pastor, her imam, but not the government telling her what to do. Not a bunch of folks up at a state capitol telling her what to do. As though she doesn't know what's in her own best interest and they know better, come on. And it is my pledge to you when Congress passes a bill to restore the protections and reproductive freedom nationwide, as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. Proudly sign it into law. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. So much is on the line in this election. So much is on, I love you back, and listen, so much. So much is on the line in this election, and we have to remember, this is not 2016 or 2020. The stakes are even higher. Because a few months ago, the United States Supreme Court just told the former president that he would be essentially immune from anything he does while he's in office. Now, just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails, right? He, he who has vowed, if reelected, that he will be a dictator on day one. That 
He would weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. He who has called for the, quote, termination of the Constitution of the United States. Well, well, well. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because see, here's the thing. The courts will handle that. Let's handle November, shall we? We'll handle November. We'll handle November. And we are clear. Look, anybody who says they would terminate the Constitution of the United States should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States. Never again. Never again. Never again. And so after all these years, we know who Donald Trump is. He is someone who will stop at nothing to claim power for himself. And you don't have to take my word for it. I've said for a while now, watch his rallies. Listen to his words. He tells us who he is. And he tells us what he would do if he is elected president. So here tonight, I will show you one example of Donald Trump's worldview and intentions. Please roll the clip. The worst people are the enemies from within. The enemy from within. Those people are more dangerous, the enemy from within, than Russia and China. These people are, should be put in jail the way they talk about our judges and our justices. Now, if you had one really violent day, one rough hour, and I mean real rough. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard, or if really necessary, by the military. So, so you heard, so you heard his words. You heard his words coming from him. He's talking about the enemy within Pennsylvania. He's talking about the enemy within our country, Pennsylvania. He's talking about that he considers anyone who doesn't support him or who will not bend to his will an enemy of our country. It's a serious issue. He's saying, he is saying that he would use the military to go after them. Think about this. And, and, and we know who he would target. And we know he, who he would target because he has attacked them before. Journalists whose stories he doesn't like. Election officials who refuse to cheat by filling extra votes and finding extra votes for him. Judges who insist on following the law instead of bending to his will. This is among the reasons I believe so strongly that a second Trump term would be a huge risk for America and dangerous. <laughs> Donald Trump, Donald Trump is increasingly unstable and unhinged. And he is out for unchecked power. That's what he's looking for. He wants to send the military after American citizens. He, he has worked to prevent women from making their own health care decisions and threaten your fundamental freedoms and rights, like the freedom to vote, the freedom to be safe from gun violence, the freedom to breathe clean air and drink clean water, the freedom to love who you love openly and with pride.
so here in Pennsylvania, I say to those who know best, when freedom is on the line, Americans always answer the call. We always answer the call. And in this election, And so, to your point, in this election, we will answer the call again. Because it all comes down to this. We are all here together because we know what's at stake. And we are here together because we love our country. We love our country. We love our country. How you all vote, and, and, and thank you, because how you all vote in presidential elections often ends up predicting the national result. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the chant is eerie. Eerie. <laughs> And so in Erie County, you can vote early in person at the Erie County Voter Registration Office. From now until Tuesday, October 29th. And so now is the time to make your plan to vote. And if you have already received your ballot in the mail, please do not wait. Fill it out and return it today or tomorrow, but please get it out. And remember, the deadline to register to vote in Pennsylvania is Monday, October 21st. So if you or anyone you know has not yet registered, now is the time because, look, the election is here. And we need to organize, we need to mobilize, we need to energize folks, and we need to remind everybody that their vote is their voice, and your voice is your power.